this episode of The Paytech Show, I've come to Mexico City to find out all I can about financial inclusion and financial services here in Mexico. Coming up, we sit down with Galileo, Belvu, and financial challenger bank, Klar, to find out all we can about the state of financial services here in Mexico. Tori, with your expertise in Mexico, can you give me a, a bit of background to financial services and the financial services industry here in Mexico? Yeah, so if you look at really the, the needs of, of, of the industry here, you have about 50 some odd banks that are, you know, they have their own products and services that they, that they offer uh, their clients, but there's 100, almost 130 million people in Mexico and, you know, 90% plus of, of those transactions are done in cash. And that represents, you know, a lot of a lot of different problems, especially as you look to, you know, the way that uh, digitally, you know, everybody is is moving. Everybody has a, a phone, a device. Their subscriptions, their different services that you know, electronic payments are central to. So, in a market that's dominated by cash, it makes it, uh, you know tricky to, to pay for your, your Spotify account or to, um, you know, do, do different things like uh, get an Uber. Um, so I, I think that if you, if you look at Mexico and, and, and what, what the, the financial industry is like in Mexico, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of opportunity to, uh, you know, get di these different products and, and, and really, you know, what they call financial inclusion, but um, you know, bring that into into people's hands. Now, it wouldn't be fintech without getting a challenger bank in. So I've gone to Klar to see what they can do to improve customer experience in financial services and ultimately improve that financial inclusion here in Mexico. It's uh, it has its opportunities to improve. Um, about forty percent of people still don't have access to a basic bank account. Um, about 85% of people don't have access to a credit card. So judging by those two indicators, I think there's a lot of opportunities to improve, right? I think on the debit side or the current account side where we have 40% of people that don't have access to a bank account, it's by no means excusable. No, even for emerging economies, we've seen efforts that have made that gap disappear you know, over, the last, uh, over the last couple of years and with technology, there are no excuses. And on the credit side, even compared to economies such as Brazil, where about twice as many people or almost 2.5 times as many people have access to a credit card with a very similar GDP per capita, um, there's little excuse on that side as well. Um, I think part of it has been driven by the inefficiency or the complacency of the incumbents, right? Where the, the, the reality is that the incumbents have managed to find niches in which they can derive a lot of profit from and they've made that, that, that has made them quite complacent, right? And there's also inefficiencies mainly on the credit side where underwriting becomes expensive, where there's not enough data in order to serve the markets that are underserved. So I think it's because of the complacency and the inefficiencies that are where that exists within the sector that the state of, of, of finance is, is quite quite improvable let's call it why is it do you think that the banks the traditional institutions have maintained that complacency over the last couple of years and why do you think cla and some other fintechs are in the perfect position to take advantage of that complacency? I think there's three elements, right? One of them being the, uh, the cost base with which they operate, right? Um, the average of the big guys has about 1,500 branches, about 30,000, 40,000 employees to serve, uh, serve the retail segment. Um, so, and very blown up overhead structures with very big expensive buildings that I'm sure you've noticed along, along the more expensive streets in town. So one of them is pretty basic, but it's the cost structure that they've built up over time. No, given that it was a protected market and everyone was doing the same, um, they just built up very expensive fixed cost basis. Um, what, the second one being technology. 
right? I think technology that ties a little bit into the first, but their systems were built 30, 40 years ago and not to blame them, right? That's the way it was. And everything is a big monolith in a way or the other, right? So it's pretty, pretty difficult for them to, to truly take distance from that. So those are the two things that mainly drive the high cost base that makes them focus on a segment that can allow them to break even at a fairly uh, early point in the lifetime of the, of the user, right? Where they say, this is how much it will cost me to serve them with this infrastructure that I pay for. Thus, I cannot access segments that are not uh, profitable for me or where the ROI is not interesting to me. And then the other one, I think it's a bit more, more conceptual or cu cultural, but it could be about the, the importance that they've given the user, right? Where it's not necessarily the most important um, metric in their, in their board meetings, right? Where nobody talks about NPS, nobody talks about customer centricity, nobody truly no is close to the user trying to understand what type of services could truly be of value. So I think those three elements have kind of uh, derived in a cocktail that lets them with the segment they're already serving, no, which is a higher end segment in which they can break even quickly. Um, and with products that are also a bit old fashioned, if you want to call it that, no, where they're not standing close by to the user, trying to understand what they what is truly of value to them. Mexico is still predominantly a cash based market. Um, how can this actually enable Mexico to leapfrog more mature financial markets like Europe or the United States when it comes to this payment tech and helping financial inclusion? Yeah, I, th I think it's really exciting, actually, that that it is a cash based model because you're really starting with, you know, the grand majority of the population um, that have not had ever an experience with, you know, be it a bank or financial institution. And you have these new fintech providers and, and companies, program managers that are able to offer these specific solutions and focused user experiences that, that solve, you know, those different issues. Um, you know, that, that people generally aren't getting, you know, what they need from, from banks or other existing institutions. So I think it's, a, it's an exciting opportunity because fintech and, and, and fintech companies are really good at focusing on that user experience, which is what I feel like is lacking in a lot of the uh, more legacy models or, or issuers. And so being able to take the grand population that has not had a good experience or an experience at all and couple that with um, a financial financial institution like a fintech or uh, a clar here in mexico um, that is is really tailoring everything around the needs of of that customer so that their first taste of electronic payments is is a pleasant one and one that that gets them um, you know, excited about, um, you know, kind of this digital world that, that we're living in now. With this new fintech ecosystem, what do you think will be some of the, the biggest challenges facing the traditional financial institutions if they don't take advantage of this openness? Well, yeah, I, I see it more as the opportunity, you know? If you have all this information, you have better tools to develop better products and then provide the consumer a reason to switch from, a, a, a very visible reason to switch from the informal economy to a more formal economy. How critical will enablers be in this new financial ecosystem where we're starting to see more financial institutions plug in and play with the fintechs and the fintechs who typically don't have the customer base or the regulatory insight to be able to connect with the financial institution? Sure, I think it, the answer will be critical as in years. No. The years that it would take financial institutions to build that infrastructure or the resources and 
the amount of resources that finance, like fintechs would have to put in to develop that infrastructure. And when those uh, resources are, we believe, better used in developing their core business, whether it is lending, debit card, credit card, whatever they're doing. Yeah, that's where, where I see the enablers coming in and uh, uh, giving a, a boost to the ecosystem. Can you tell me a bit more about how you can provide that nitty gritty back-end service that enables the fintechs here to actually thrive? Yeah, I think, I think to your point, the key word there is enable, right? You have, if you, as you look at you know, the market and there's, there's many, you know, the thesis of a lot of, of different providers is this financial inclusion that everybody is seeking to, to provide, right? Whether it's by a, a service or a card or um, you know, something of that source. Um, Galileo really works to be that enabling layer um, where if you, you peel back that, that top layer of what are all these different services or products that are being formed, what's actually the engine behind that? And, and can that engine support um, the, you know, the growth or scale of, of what they're looking for, but also um, enabling the different processes or technology or, 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 or products that allow for that, you know, specific use case. Um, I think one of the really, really cool things about Galileo is, is we really try to focus on being that enabler and allowing for the solution to really be born out of the problem, right? So we have uh, an open API that, that we have documentation and out on, on our site that we can let anybody out, um, out there that wants to come and, and, and look at it and, and participate and try. And, you know, that's been really, really powerful and being able to see all these different, um, you know, in, in, in Mexico, they call it a chiste, right? Every fintech they has, their, they have their little spark or their little, their little thing that, that makes them unique or, or solves the unique problem that, that they're looking to satisfy for. And Galileo is, is extremely flexible in our platform, the way that we're architected to be able to support uh, you know, infinite uh, possibilities and, and solutions. Um, so I think in Mexico, that's that's really great because every every market has different has different struggles, has different solutions that they're trying to provide for for the for the market. And uh, I think that's 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 why a lot of our partners uh, really are looking at Galileo, especially here domestically, because we have the ability to to be flexible and. Um, you know, the underlying technology that, that supports, you know, that, that different use case or problem. This might be an easy question for you now, but how do you think CLA are set to become pivotal in this new move to fintech adoption in Mexico? Yeah, and I think we're, I mean, we're a young company. We've been around for about a year, um, but we can already show numbers that um, validate our thesis that we can drive this change forward, right? We've come out of beta about five, six months ago, I think five months, and we've opened over 100,000 accounts for our users. Um, we have managed to place about 10,000 credit lines uh, that have been repaid already. So I think on the debit side, again, and going to those two big buckets, but how can we change on the debit side just by offering a simpler, um, a simpler experience for the user where it's completely frictionless and within five minutes you can open up an account and you receive your card by mail in 24 to 72 hours, whether it's here across the street or if it is in the last corner of Mexico, right? So by taking away a lot of the friction, we are changing that landscape. I think also going back to the question of economics and the complacency and how we view our products, I think we need to offer our users certain things that the banks don't in order to make it compelling enough for them to come over and switch to Clark. Right. So we can offer them a free account without any associated fees, uh, no hidden fees. And it's not just like in big letters in a, in a big ad free. It's truly free. 
We offer a cashback reward all the way from one to 4% to each one of our users. So in that way, we're not only saying like, hey, it's a way less frictionless experience. We're also offering them something of tangible value that they might then consider bringing their primary relationship over to Klar. So that's, I think, where we pay a, a critical role, even on the debit side. On the credit side, it's a completely different ballgame. No? But by providing access, we are doing things very differently no? because we, do, we use alternative data to underwrite our credit lines. So we don't depend on the same sources of information that all of the banks depend on and thus only offer credits to the same people over and over again. So with that alone, we can expand that pie of users or consumers in Mexico that have access to a, a decent credit, right? Or at least that's the way we describe it. So a lot of our work, and we always talk about democratizing financial services in Mexico, meaning there are decent products out there offered by the incumbents, but they're all targeting a very selected group of individuals. This happens both on the debit side and on the credit side. And we believe that by lowering our cost base and using more sophisticated technology, we can bring those products on the debit side and on the credit side that are reserved for very few to the whole bulk of, of Mexicans. And can you tell me a bit more about your collaboration with Galileo and what it means for Clark? Of course, and it's been a, a great collaboration. We're very happy to, to work with them. Um, what does it mean to Klar? I mean, for us, it means that we have a partner that operates at the technical, technological excellence level that we operate in, right? We have a, an extremely talented of, of a team of engineers, both here in Mexico and in Berlin, because a good chunk of our, of our tech is in Berlin. And when we build the products that we want for this market, we have to ensure that we are also partnering with uh, technologies that are at the scale at which we're, or at the level at which we need them, right? And this is both in terms of how robust they can be, this is in terms of how flexible they can be and how reliable they can be. So in Galileo, again, no, we go back to this notion of nothing having happened in Mexico, really, in the payments world in a while, and all of a sudden a lot of things happening, right? So maybe the incumbents are happy with the processor they have or with the infrastructure that they have because it's out of compla complacency, no, or the complexity to change things. But all of a sudden we uh, start mixing up things as fintechs and that's where a partner such as Galileo becomes incredibly re relevant in raising that bar, right? Again, what was happening with banks and now the competition that, that fintechs are bringing to the table, it's, it applies to the old school processors and to Galileo. No, where things worked because nobody was demanding more and nobody was raising the bar, but now things are changing. So in Galileo, we found a, a fantastic partner with a lot of expertise in how to onboard and connect and get fintechs up and running quickly enough and how to react with enough flexibility when we need something from them in order not to sacrifice our product, right? If you're working with a subpar processor, for example, or a subpar partner, your product might have to make um, concessions because of the limitations that the partner offers. And I think that's the reality for some fintechs even, and for a lot of the incumbents. Here we can ensure that the, process, the products we want to build are supported by the infrastructure that Galileo puts uh, at our disposal. So it is the perfect partner for the way we viewed our products and our technology, which is raising it like raising it to another level. Thanks for watching this very special episode of The Paytech Show. Catch all the other episodes at www.fintechf.com and I hope to see you again soon. Cheers. Ciao. Hasta luego.